The Prodigy. This is a horror movie about a son who is a genius. He's, it looked like he was like two months old and he started saying mommy, which is a little right. crazy. Like that's not, that's not about being smart. <laughs> like that's, uh, that's way beyond. That's like supernatural ability at that point to be two months and be able to so, speak. So can we call it right now that the prodigy is going to be part of the MCU? I think so. Okay, good. This is a Tony Stark um, <laughs> prequel movie. But uh, this is the this is the origin story of Justin Hammer. Don't know who that is. He's the villain from uh, Iron Man Two. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Sam Rockwell. Yeah, I love Sam Rockwell. That was his worst role yeah. ever. I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you didn't see his movie. Oh man, of course. What, uh, what was it called? The Chuck Palahniuk book that they turned into a movie. Uh, choke. I forget the name of it. Is it Choke? Yeah, Choke. I didn't yeah, see Choke. It. Yeah. I wanted to read the book oh, first, it. and I never got around. I couldn't, I couldn't even finish it, man. Really? I couldn't even finish the movie. Yeah, I it love was bad. Sam Rockwell and The Way Way Back is one of my all-time favorite movies. Mm-hmm. But uh, Prodigy, I think, could be good. So I'm not really a fan of horror. I've never, never really been into it. Um, partly because when I was a kid, when I was like five years old. My grandpa made me watch Child's Play, the Chucky movie, and it. What? He was an evil person, I think. Okay. <laughs> he was not. You're, a, like, I, you're like, I think. And I'm like, no, he was. <laughs> yeah. It was a group. It was me, my cousin, and like three other kids. We were all around the same age. And he, I think he was just trying to play a prank on us. But that like terrified me. Rightfully so, I think. Five years old, child's right. play. Um, yeah. And so I was always scared of horror movies growing up. I didn't see much until I, you know, I was in high school. And by that point, I was able to disconnect from them to where I knew, oh, none of this is real. None of this stuff is happening. So it doesn't matter. Did I lose right. you? Oh, there you are. Thought you no, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I was just listening to you. Um, and so they don't scare me because I don't, I don't feel like they're real at all. I've been able to separate. Right. Like I don't, I don't get invested in the story. Um, so I'm not a huge horror fan. This one looks interesting with the, the son being the danger because then you have right. the element of the parents wanting to, you know, nurture and take care of their kid, but also, you know, him being dangerous because if you have say like Jason Voorhees is incapacitated, the characters would have no qualms about chopping his head off. They're like, now's right. our chance. Right. But if your son is incapacitated, that's a lot harder choice, a lot harder decision. So I think they're going to run into that a lot where it's like, the characters are going to have these really difficult choices to make. And I think that will make the movie interesting. But I think overall, the son being the danger is going to just be a red herring. And he's actually going to be the hero that he's, Uh. he's going to know what's going on, that there's some supernatural thing or some other threat that he's been trying to protect them from, but they've been afraid of him because they don't understand. Or I don't know. That's my, that's my guess about what's going to happen. Uh. Oh, Well, this particular movie, I would, uh, I don't think that they're going to have multiple uh, opportunities to take them out. I think what end up happening is it's going to be a story of them consistently being told that, hey, your son is evil. And then all these mysterious things happen to people around their lives. And then at the very end of the movie, he's going to kill one of the parents, probably the dad and then the mom and him will will take off together because yeah. you know the whole mother nurture thing. What's your opinion of horror? Do you like them? Do you, um, it, it, it depends. Uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a f- huge fan of, of horror movies in general, but rated R horror movies like PG 13 movies, uh, horror movies don't do anything for me. Yeah. So if, uh, you know, all of these, the only this, one that ever worked, I think was the, uh, the ring. I think believe that was PG 13. And that was the ring was the ring was R, was it? Yeah, because I saw it. The la- I, I believe I can check it real quick, but fairly um, certain it's PG thirteen, but I, I could be wrong. Maybe I gave into the hype, and that's why I saw it. But I'm pretty. I thought that it was rated R. Well, if it is, Let's, I'm just going to cut all this out so I don't look dumb. <laughs> well, no, you're right. Yeah, PG thirteen. It's PG thirteen. I think the hmm. ring goo which is what it was based off of was right. the equivalent to R. If like the, 
if that came yeah. over, that that would be considered R. But the ring was actually like creepy enough on its own that they didn't need to go into all the extra stuff. Right. You know? The last horror movie that I watched that was off the top of my head that I was going to say that was PG thirteen was The Grudge. Okay, and that was when and that was when I dated my wife. And we've been married for 14 years, so The Grudge was 15 years ago. Yeah. So that shows you how long it's been since I was like, hey, you know what I want to see? I want to see a a uh, toothless horror movie because I, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think yeah. a horror movie can be a horror movie without the – and when I say rated R, I'm not talking about nudity. I'm not talking about um, uh, language. I'm talking about just the horror and the violence and the gore that goes with a horror movie. Yeah. Well, I think my opinion about ratings – has been it should either be family or for adults and then you can do what your movie calls calls for mm-hmm. so if you want to make one that is aimed for like younger kids like not younger but like you know 13 14 year olds you can do that you can make a movie with the context that fits in that like oh this is more family friendly but it's not a kids movie but not trying to fit in like, okay, we can only say the F word four times before we have to change our rating or we can only do right. this much stuff. Like these, these rules that they have to fit in really hurts the story. And if we took right. away that, that, you know, like it should just be based on the merits of its own thing, not a hard and fast rule system that we have. And we can, right. you can go and do like the parents guide of like, Oh, this has a lot of nudity in it. This has a lot of curse words in it, but it shouldn't be at this PG thirteen R in C seventeen type thing where it's like you can do you can do this so many times. If you do it too many, you get bumped into the next category. If you have too much right. blood, you get bumped up, and it just I think it hurts movies because they are trying to fit. I don't know. I I, I kind of agree with uh, the system that we have now. Because you have kind of like your 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 inner what's it your intermediate section of movies to, you know because like let's let's look at Jurassic Park Jurassic Park is it it is not so much a family film but it's also really not like an adult film like um, I would never take my three year old to see Jurassic Park uh, because you know I think it'd be too intense but then also if if it was just labeled adult then I would have to do a lot more research to be like, well, you know, what's in it? You you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not necessarily saying having a label uh, for like as adult, like, oh, this is an adult movie type thing. More of having the label just for this is specifically for kids and then everything else being kind of open. And I think it's important to kind of be aware of what we are showing our kids. You know what I mean? Like having, Having a PG-13 movie, they can hit all the guidelines, but the content could be awful, right? What they're saying could be terrible. The messages they're teaching could be terrible. The violence, the, the suggestive images, like the, like with, um, in the dark night, the Joker slamming the guy's head onto the pencil. That is horrific. Even though you don't see it, you know exactly what happens. And that's considered PG-13. Like that's pencil disappear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just in his pocket, but that's way worse than anything in Saw. Like that pencil scene, way worse than anything the Saw traps. So? Yeah, oh yeah, for me at least. No, no, because you didn't see anything happen. But that's the scary part. That's what? the that's the whole the whole uh, idea of like with Jaws, right? It's what you don't see that scares you because you have to play it in your mind. Yeah, because for me, like that wasn't really. Like, I guess that scene just didn't impact me at all the way that it did for you because, like, I laughed and moved on. Like, it was because, you know, the guy came over to do it. He's like, let me show you magic. Boom, it's gone. Ta-da. And then he sits down and and starts talking. Because you, like, imagine a pencil going through your eyeball into your brain and just going all the way through until you're dead. You, you, like, you, you, you broke down that scene a lot more than I did when I saw (laughs) it. It was upsetting. (laughs) Because for me, like it was just like a, it was a Joker scene. Like, yeah, life means nothing to him. So, let me show you a magic trick. Boom, it's gone. I laugh, and then he's, then oh, he's man. immediately talking about why they're hiding underneath under the ground rather than the, um, 
being out in the uh, yeah, yeah. the night. Yeah. So I didn't even think twice about it. Oh man, it was so emotionally upsetting for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, the Joker is an emotionally upsetting character. That's true. When done right. But back to Prodigy. But, are you? Yeah, do you think you'll see this? Um, I think I've already seen this movie. And I think it's called yeah. The Omen, but I don't think <laughs> at the end of this movie he's going to be the son of Satan. I just think he's just going to be a jacked up kid that murders and gets away with it. I see. I don't even just think. Try and, I think he's going to be the hero. I think that's that. I'm calling it. That's, that's not the way that horror movies work, though. A lot of them do. A lot of them like well, to do red herring type stuff where you your bad guys you think are one thing and then it turns out them to be the hero. Generally, it's not the the main character or like a in the main ensemble like um what is it like the Freddy versus jason no. Freddy versus jason I mean, jason ended up being the good guy at the end of the movie did he with uh <laughs> the sh- I, I don't know i've never seen it uh you've never seen Freddy versus jason no all right that's the next movie we're watching <laughs> um with the shining with the groundskeeper he always yeah. seemed kind of creepy but in the end turned out to be the ultimate hero even though he died without doing anything what yeah, I was going to say, he literally took an axe to the chest, yeah. and that was it. Yeah, but he's all, in my heart, he's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I will probably never see this movie. Yeah, I can't imagine ever watching this. But we'd love to know what you guys think. Let us know down in the comments below.